Isaiah chapter 41. Are we there? Isaiah 41. I'd like us to look at verse 10. Are we there? Okay. Can you read together with me? Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Read it again. I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right. So behold, all those who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. Your amen should be louder. Amen. I'd like you to just help me tell somebody by your side. Tell the person, fear not. Fear not. Say it again. Fear not. Say it again. Fear not. Say it again. Fear not. Tell him again, don't be dismayed. Don't be, dismayed. Don't be, confused. Don't be confused. Don't be worried. Don't be worried. For, the For the Lord is with you. He will strengthen you. Will strengthen you. Tell him, yes. He will help you. Yes. Say yes. yes. He will help you. Yes. Say he will uphold you will with his righteous hand, his righteous hand. Of, right hand. of right hand. So shall it be. Yes. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Take your seat. Welcome back this morning to the season of divine help. And uh, I have said something about divine help on Thursday, right? And I'm going to continue where I stop. I'm going to remember what is help. Help is what? Assistance. What is help? Help is to receive assistance. You know what is assistance? I show it to you here very practically. Abby, a seat. Somebody should stand for you a seat. Abby, you remember the illustration I gave you with a chair? You are standing, and when you are standing, you are actually undergoing stress. And then, chair help you. That is a seat, help you to relieve you of your stress. Because if I say all of you should stand here till I finish preaching, some of you may fall. Some of you may not have the strength. But when I say sit down, your weight has been transferred to the seat. So that seat is assisting you. And I said that is what God stands for you. Any burden, any load you are carrying, he say, come, put it on me. I am there for you as seat. Sit on me. That's why I say, cast your burdens upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Amen. Amen. Now, help is absolutely important to everyone in life. I, I think it would be difficult to say there is somebody in this life who does not need help. Is there anybody? Is there anybody who said, I, I don't need help all my life? That's to say, you can do everything for yourself, including your breath. You can do it for yourself. Is it possible? Is it possible? Is it okay? I, I, I can keep my life. I'm so sure nothing will take my life. Even without God, I can keep it. Is it possible? Yes. Somebody say, Father, Father I, am I am part of the people of the that need help. That need help. Say, there are, there are things I cannot do, I cannot do for, myself. for myself. There are things, are things I, cannot I cannot do for myself. Therefore, yes. I need yes. your, help. your help. God will give you help. Amen. The Lord will give you help. Yes. I say, the Lord will give you help. Amen. Because there are things I cannot do.
for myself. As simple as some things look. How many of you here can bab yourself, men? How many men here? You can bab yourself. I mean, you put the clipper and then you get your shape correctly and then you, you, you carve the back and you. Can you bab yourself accurately? Eh? If you bab yourself without announcement, we will know. Or is there any woman that can plait herself successfully a very fine style? I'm not talking of shuku. I'm not talking of shuku. A fine style. I mean, and then you plait yourself Bob Marley. You plait it and plait it and plait. Or one million braid, you call it. And you plait it yourself. Can you? You need help. As small as it look. You need somebody to to do what? To assist you. So that's why help is important. It's a subject that has to do with everybody. And let me begin by saying this morning, if the issue bothering you is what you can handle, then you don't have a problem. Did you hear what I said? If the issue or issues bothering you are things you can handle, you don't have problem problem. But if there is somebody here that have issue that is bigger than what you can handle on your own, then you need help. True of us? And understand there are times you are going to be compressed in life with certain issues. There are times you will be under pressure. You know, compressor. Certain things will compress within you. There will be a lot of liabilities. A lot of responsibilities. That will take over your life so much that you will be compressed. And when you are in such time, that means... You need to express yourself to God so you can be relieved. You know that also you can find help. When you wake up some morning and you notice you can't explain, but you feel so heavy, that is to say there is an issue. You know what I said? There is an issue. When you go to bed and you struggle to find sleep, that means there is an issue. When you sleep and suddenly wake up 2 a.m. and you are finding it difficult to sleep, but there is an issue. When you find it difficult to laugh, there is an issue. When you see food and you lose appetite, there is an issue. I'm giving you symptoms that shows you that you have. When you wear suit and you carry palm sandal and you are going out on suit, there is an issue. I'm going to finish what I said. Palm sandal on suit, there is an issue. That means something is wrong somewhere. For you to wear suit and wear palm sandal, and somebody has to call you, Uncle. Say, mm, sorry, sorry. Then you go back and now locate cover shoe. There is an. When you go out and you forget to put your wrist to watch, there is an issue. Because if there is no issue, you will take your time to put everything one by one. I know some people came to church this morning with issues. Somebody may not even remember to brush and just go, there is an issue. Until when he get out and he speak and somebody say, Uncle Alpha, did you brush today at all? Then he will remember. There are problems I bet you that will make you forget you have no brush. Am I saying the right thing? If your landlord say, this morning I'm coming. I'm coming to evict you. I'm coming to arrest you. 
I bet you, you can come to church and forget your Bible at home. Three of us. Uh, maybe somebody came to church like that this morning. When there is issue, you forget to comb your head. When there is issue for women, that day no powder. No earring. You see a woman who is used to earring and powder. You just suddenly see no earring, no powder. There is issue. Two of us, no, no all these things. There is issue. Whatever your issue is, all I'm here to tell you, that is the ministry of God. I told you that God is not interested to those who are at ease. But it's interested to those who are heavy laden. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you. So the interest of God are people with one issue or the other. I thank God I have an issue. Do you have an issue? Then God will settle it for you. Yeah. I say God will settle it for you. Yeah. I say God will settle it. See how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth who went about healing all those who are sick, setting the oppressed free, all those who are captives, liberating them and casting out demons from those who are possessed for God was with him. So you see, he came for people with what? Issues. People with issues. He came for, you see, I didn't come for those who are whole. I didn't come for those who are, I came for those who are sick. I came for the lost sheep of the household of Israel. I came for those who have issues. Who have issues. Somebody say, Father, address my issue. Say, Father, address my issue. Father, address my issue. I address my issue. I address. God is happy to minister to people who have issues. Who have issues. That's why I say woe to those who are at ease in Zion. Those who have no issue will never know how to seek God. You will never know how to seek God if you have not gone through issues. As a matter of fact, your prayer life will die if you don't have issues. The other say, you will not be good in praying if you don't have issues. So issues are ginger for intercessory life. Issues. Issues. When we are praying, I know people with issues. I know those who don't have issues. Because anyone who has issues doesn't take chances. Every opportunity. You know why? He is compressed, so he needs to express. When you are compressed, you need to... If you don't express, you can blow up. You know what I said? You can do what? You can blow up. So there is need to express what you compress inside. So every opportunity he wants to. So when you see your spirit yearning for prayer, there are issues. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Say, Father, today my issues shall be settled. Say, Father, today today my issues shall be settled. There are seven kind of help I said we need. Isn't it? On Wednesday I said the first one. You need help to stand. Issue on how you can stand. How not to fall in the midst of trials. In the midst of challenges. In the midst of difficulties. How to stand and keep going with God. Help to stand. How many people say, Father, help me to stand? No matter what I'm going through. Give me the strength I need to stand. Give me the strength I need. Give me the strength I need to stand. Now, the second kind of help you need this morning. Help to succeed. Help to do what? The first kind of help, help to stand. 
stand so I don't fall. Number two, help. There you need help to succeed. Every adventure that worth it must cost you some level of apprehension. I say it again. Every adventure that worth it must cost you some level of apprehension. Whatever what you becoming great must surely make you fearful. That's what I just said. Say after me. Whatever, Whatever. worth making me great it must be fearful must be fearful so whatever what it in life any adventure that what making you great it must be apprehensible that's why the word fear not must come in because the adventure must be fearful one when we say help to succeed what are we talking about help to accomplish certain projects certain things in life there are things you can never, never be able to achieve until the Almighty help you. True of us. There are things you can never. As simple as delivery look to you. If God did not help you, you can carry pregnancy and not deliver it successfully. I have seen not one, not two, not three women who died in the course of delivery. They started the adventure, but they did not finish it. That's why help to succeed at anything is very important. I knew a woman who carried triplets and died in the process of delivering them. I knew the one who carried twins and died in the process of delivering them. And yet, we have seen another one that carried seven and delivered them. I have seen it. By what? By what? What kind of help? Help to succeed. So, anything you start, you need help from God to finish it. To succeed means to finish something. How many of you know if God will not help you and me, we may not finish this year? This may not bother you, but for me, every minute I keep asking him for help to help me succeed this year. In other words, to make me finish this year well. Because I am very sure some people will not reach tomorrow. I'm pretty sure some people will not see December. Some people will sit down and still do good money with you. By noon time, they are gone. Somebody say, Father, Father I need your help to finish this year. I need your help to finish this year. I need your help. You can start a building project. If God did not help you, you won't finish it. You will not succeed at it. The issue is not starting things. The issue is finishing things. You know what I said? That's one thing I know about life. The issue is not starting a school. The issue is finishing. Can you finish that school? Because a lot of people start but not all that start finishes. Have you? Not all that start finish. When you check the number at matriculation and compare to number at convocation, there's always different. Some people have dropped after matriculation. They wear the matriculation gown, but they do not wear the convocation gown. Either by death or by withdrawal. I decree, God will help you to succeed at anything you start. Amen. Your amen should have been like thunder. Amen. I prophesy whatever you start, you will finish it. 
I decree you will succeed. I decree you will succeed. I decree you will succeed. Say, Father, help me to succeed at what I start. Help me to succeed at what I start. Help me. You can start up your marriage plan. If God did not help you, it will not finish. It won't succeed. I've seen a lady who was disappointed on her wedding day. I've seen not even once, not twice, not three. That has come to me for counseling. What happened? Battered and shattered. What was the problem? Disappointment on the wedding day. You know what it means? On wedding day. That is one of the horrible things that can happen to a lady. On wedding day. The man did not die. He just says he's no more interested. They were in the church. For the procession, the priests are waiting. The lady arrived in Venu. The man is here to show up. What was the problem? Hold up. This is mental hold up. Satanic hold up. He suddenly said, I'm not doing it again. In fact, he was in Glet and went to opposite direction of where his wedding venue was. There is nothing they did not do. He said, I'm no more interested. On the wedding day, you know how many cows has gone? You know the old one bears that have gone? And people are there with their own bear. Waiting until one by one they vacated the seat in the church. You won't suffer humiliation. Yeah. On your glorious day, you won't suffer humiliation. Yeah. The lady went into, she fell and slum. Went into coma. I'll tell you for about three weeks. Just find herself in the hospital. And after that, this is what the husband says. He's not interested in. With the wedding gown, she landed in the hospital bed. Wedding gown. That is the one that the man is alive. We're not talking about the one that the man even died on that same wedding day. So, so it's not about saying, I'm, I, I, I know I'm, I'm going to wed. I'm going to wed. If God did not help you to succeed, my brother, you cannot guarantee what can happen at the last minute of that adventure. That is why we need help. To succeed. Think about something you started. Think about something you started. Think about something you have started. And look at it that God, if you really do not help me, I can't succeed at this thing. Listen to me, insufficiency can deny you the ability to succeed. Abby? Sometimes you have uh, 500,000 or 1 million. Oh, nice. You start your building. And before you know, some problem come and clear the money away. And you leave it the way you laid the foundation. The money has followed another trouble. And that's all. The devil attack you with insufficiency and you will not be able to finish that. Day. If you don't receive hell, that land will lie there until the grass will grow back on it and turn it to wilderness. Say, Father, Father. every project... I have started. You will help me to succeed. You will help me to succeed. You will help me to succeed. Ah, Father, help me. I need help to succeed. Plan to go abroad. Plan to process whatever document. If God did not help you, the thing may be all may be shattered. I emphasize. Starting is not an issue. It is ending. That is an issue. That is where we all need God to help us. I remember a young guy who died some years ago. The only graduate of their family who they sold almost everything in their house. You know what it means for both extended family, family to be selling everything to train you to school. He studied petrochemical engineering. What do you call it? It's petrochemical. And he died while serving. After they have invested all they have, he died while serving. They call it typhoid. <laughs> if God did not help you that you have gone through typhoid, you think you can succeed? Say, Father, thank you for helping me to succeed. I need more of your grace, Lord. I need more 
of your Christ. This is important. So this is a subject that should, should make you really hold on to heaven and say, Father, help me. Help me. This thing that I've started, help me to finish it. That is why we need God every moment of our life. And God is aware that if insufficiency does not combat you, is aware that enemies can combat you. If enemy did not combat you, infirmity can combat you. Things that can make you not to succeed. What you start. That's why you need help. It can be sickness. It can be enemies. It can be lack, insufficiency, poverty, everything can attack you to make sure you did not finish. And truly, any project that worth it must generate any of those things that want to make you to stop it. Sometimes the devil can attack you by bringing wrong people to shatter that thing you start before you know. They will squander your money for you and you will not be able to finish the work. The man started a project and just at the foundation, wrong people, wrong uh, 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 laborers, wrong uh, contractor, they squandered the money and before you know they turned this man to zero. No single money and the building did not even come out of the foundation. Money that would have finished maybe a story building. They ruin him. Anyone that wants to ruin what you have started, may the Lord take them away from you. May the Lord take them away from you. May the Lord take them away. Oh yeah. Say, Father, help me to succeed. Say, Father, help me to succeed. That is important. This point is very, very important. I just need him to help me succeed. You need him to help you succeed. As any. Is there anybody that has something here that you, are, you have started and you really want to finish that thing? Is there anybody here? Anybody? There's something you are pursuing and you want to really succeed. You want to finish that thing. Today, God will help you. Yeah. I say, God will help you. Yeah. Just begin to imagine in the spirit and say, Father, if it's poverty, remove it for me. Whatever will stop me from finishing, succeeding from what I have started, Father, remove it on my way. I must succeed. Oh, say that one a little before I tell you some things and close. I must succeed. You must help me, oh God. You must help me, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Your amen can be louder. Amen. Now for you to carry help that will make you succeed. Understand some things in that verse we have read. He said number one, fear not. Somebody say I will not be afraid. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Now, why will I not be afraid? He said, I will be with you. So that means when I start this school, there are fearful things I know, but I will not be afraid because I know I will succeed. Why? God is with me. He didn't end there. He, he said, Yes. Yes, I will help you. I like that. I thought we'll clap for Jesus. Yes, I give you assurance. I will help you. Somebody say, God will help me. Say yes, 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 yes. So when you tell somebody, my brother, I start this school, I will finish it. How can you say, do you know whether you finish it? Yes, I will finish. Why? Because God is with me. Man, I will finish it. When you start the building, tell somebody, I will finish the building. Why are you saying it? Yes, I will finish it. Because God is with me. And to give you confidence more, he said, listen, I will hold you with my righteous right hand. Hallelujah. Oh, I hope you have not forgotten the right hand of God. That's what we call power. When we say power, power, power. The right hand of God. You remember? He said, I will hold you with my right hand. And in the right hand of God, you know what it means there? The first finger stands for what? Courage. The second finger stands for control. The third finger, currency. The fourth finger, contact. And the five finger, calmness. Calmness. 
So that means God said, don't worry, don't fear anything. I will give you help to succeed. He said, because my righteous hand, right hand will hold you. You may not see it. I am bragging not because I have the money, but because I know somebody is holding me. I hope you know sometime you can brag to people because of who you have, not because of what you have. He, you may be tracking, you know, but you can you can tell somebody, be careful with me, oh, because you know who your father is, or because you know who your brother is, or because you know who your uncle is. And you know sometimes people can respect you not because of what you have, but who you have. Yeah, we know now because in it and your brother have been. Because senator, my brother, you are not senator. There, there's no senator on you at all. But because you have senator, you they, they respect you for that. Uh, we know now because you get senator. I speak to somebody today. Because of who you have, you will succeed. Because of who you have, you will succeed. Because of who you have, you will succeed. Somebody say, I have him at my right hand. I have him holding my right hand with his right hand. So I will succeed. I will succeed. So fear nothing. You hear me? Don't fear. I am not depending on my intelligence. No. I'm not depending on anything inside me myself. Mm -mm. But I'm depending on somebody who said to me I should not be afraid. Who said to me he's with me? Who said to me he will hold me? So whatever the issue is that is bothering you, whatever the issue is that is pressing you down, if you can be conscious of this fact that somebody is with you and God loves to be with people who look helpless. God loves to be with people who look hopeless. God loves to be with people who has nobody to help them. He loves to be by them. So that when you succeed, he takes the glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I know it, I know it, I know it, that I don't have any man. So if I finally succeed, no man takes the worship. You know what I said? No man takes the worship. God takes the worship. If there are any men that God used, I thank them, but they don't own the worship. Worship is consistent submission. Of your life to the person. I give that to God. I can thank you. Somebody is about to break through. Yeah. Those things that break you down. That it looks so difficult. The Lord said to me. Any moment from now. You will scale through. You will scale through. You will scale through. You will scale through. Yeah. You are going for an interview. And it seems no any human connection on your side. Nobody can stand for you and recommend you. Naturally, you felt so, so, so un unqualified for the job. And you just know they can't take you. God said, fear not, go. I will help you to succeed. Fear not, go. I will help you to succeed. Fear not, go. I will help you to succeed. No man may be by your side. God said, I'm there for you. And suddenly, why the interviewer start interviewing, even those that have recommendations from men, something begin to speak to their mind. And they start seeing something. God begin to show them something in you that you don't even know. And they will start seeing something. And start falling in love with you. And you'll be surprised that you who don't have man, you are the one that get that job. How do you know you carry God if you don't see some favor that are unusual? Say with me, with God, everything is possible for me. With God by my side, everything is possible. Yeah, yeah. Can you feel what I feel? Can you hear what I hear? Can you feel what I feel? With God, everything is possible. You know, you know, I just, I just hear, I just hear somebody very soon is going to ask you, how did you make it? I bet you. I don't know what you are looking for precisely, but I hear in my spirit that somebody very soon is going to ask you, how did you get it? How did you get it? You know, I see you some night weeping before God. You look so good here. You look so nice. 
But the real part of you, the real person inside you, is, is, is lonely. Lonely. Several times, I see you weeping and saying, God, why is it that I am not connected? Why is it that I don't have anybody to help me? Why is it that nobody to make room for me? You know, and you keep wondering, why is this happening to me? Over and over, I see sometimes you just, you just say, oh God, how I wish I have this person. How I wish I have that person. God said, well, you didn't know. You got me today, the greatest asset the world needs. God said, I am by your side. God said, I'm going to shock you. I'm going to surprise you. God said, I'm going to prove to you that one with me is better than majority. God said, I'm going to show you very soon that I am the one who hold your right hand. I will give you the help that no man can give you. Give him glory. He will help you. I hear he will help you. I hear he will help. Yeah.